Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to thank Indian Foundation for giving me an opportunity to share our perspectives on terrorism in Myanmar. Uh, the main focus of discussions I would like to bring is the complexity of uh, terrorism, ethnic conflict, and war economy. Uh, looking into the strategy utilized by the military government in Myanmar in the last 20 years. Uh, many of you know that Myanmar has been in ethnic armed conflict since its independence from the British. The armed conflict has been ongoing for 70 years. So Myanmar is characterized as the longest running civil war. Uh, however, uh, nowadays if you go to Myanmar, almost all populated area in Myanmar are absent of armed conflict. So how the government managed to do that, even though that was a military hunter in the last uh, 25, 30 years. In late 1980s, there were about 60 plus armed groups fighting the government in different capacities. Most of the fighting occurred outside populated areas. The insurgent groups are based along the border of Thailand, China, India, and Bangladesh. Since 1989, the military government changed its approach in counterinsurgency campaign. The government saw ceasefire, the military hunted saw ceasefire with ethnic armed groups. The government allowed the armed groups to keep their weapons and the troops and to accumulate wealth by engaging in formal and informal economies. So government strategy was to turn the militant leaders into economic tycoons. And a lot of them become really uh, economic tycoons. So as a result, there were 40 armed groups that saw the deal with the military government. And most of the fighting stopped uh, with these groups. By 2009, the government put pressure on the, these groups either to be disarmed or transformed to paramilitary forces under the government control. So by 2009, to among these 40 groups that saw ceasefire with the government, 15 groups were totally disarmed, 15 were transformed into the government-affiliated militia, and five large armed groups were transformed into what they call border guard forces, which is under the control of the military, uh, only five large groups refused to transform. Uh, but the arm, even though the armed conflicts go on, but the 20 plus other groups still fighting the government. In 2011, when Myanmar transitioned from the military route to liberalization, the government is facing about 30 armed groups. Uh, the, during the course of transition to democracy in the last seven years, there were about six new armed groups emerge or rearm. However, the military government ceasefire and wealth approaches not a failure. There is a limited success. About 40% of armed groups were disarmed, including a few large ones, and about 50% were transformed into militia or paramilitary forces under the control of the military. The transition government in 2011 pursued a new strategy, offering ceasefire and political dialogue, but economic opportunities. So the government also came to bilateral ce agreements, ceasefire agreements with the 40 armed groups, among them, eight groups signed the nationwide ceasefire agreements in 2015. Now, that outlined a roadmap to the overall peace process. Even though the armed clashes are still going on with five groups that did not have ceasefire agreements with the government, the clashes between the government and eight signatories that signed the nationwide ceasefire agreements reduced about 90%. So although the Myanmar peace process does not progress to the expectation of the international community, the conflict dynamic was reduced and stability was restored in most parts of the country. 
Currently, there were only about five groups actively fighting the government, including those uh, Rohingya militants in Rakhine State. These groups used different array of violent methods, including IED attacks targeting civilians. In 2017, there were about 159 mines and IED attacks, and 35 civilians were killed, and 97 are wounded. In 2018, up to the end of February, there were 20 IED attacks, uh, and also uh, that killed four civilians and wounded 41. Most of the attacks actually occur in conflict zones, um, not in the major cities or the populated area. But in some cases, IED attacks target civilians and non-military installation without discrimination. Since 2018, uh, we are seeing the rise of IED explosions uh, targeting civilians and non-military uh, installations. Uh, although both uh, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda in Indian subcontinent declared Myanmar as their target, we have not seen any high-profile attack or current ongoing attacks orchestrated by these international uh, terrorist organizations in Myanmar. In fact, none of the groups claim responsibility of IED attacks in Myanmar since early 90s. Actually, there no groups in Myanmar ever claim any explosion uh, targeting civilians. Unlike the Islamic groups in Myanmar, Myanmar-based armed groups do not claim credit on those uh, IED attacks, especially in populated area. Um, Mr. Wu, if you don't mind, we'd have to Great. wind up. Yeah, let me wrap up by, by saying that uh, in, by looking at some of the strategies used in Myanmar, uh, it was an imperfect solution. It was not the perfect solution, imperfect solution, but to some extent, uh, it worked. So when considering uh, counter-terrorism and also counter-insurgency, uh, we have to ask ourselves how much extent we would like to accept an imperfect solution uh, to this solution, uh, to this problem. Thank you.